Hi, my name is Tulsi Noreen with the Dado Solution Engineering team. In this video, I'll demonstrate and discuss the steps to take in restoring a VM to Microsoft Hyper-V. The Dado Appliance and Cloud Recovery Launchpad provide MSPs with a couple of ways to restore VMs back to Hyper-V. The most common way is to perform an image export of the VM as a VHD or VHDX file. In this method, the Dado Appliance or Cloud Recovery Launchpad converts the backup image as a tick provision VHD or VHDX file that is available for download or copy over to the hypervisor data store. The second approach is to use the Dado BMR utilities to restore the backup image to an empty virtual machine. This approach is recommended in some restore scenarios as a means to create a tin provision VHD. Let's begin by looking at the first scenario, exporting the backup data as a tick provision VHD file. In the Dado Appliance, navigate to the Restore tab. For our restore scenario, we'll select the AMZ RDS server. I'll pick the Restore Image option and choose a recovery point at random from within the drop-down menu. Clicking on Start Restore presents a view where we can determine the destination of the export either network share or USB. The USB option will scan the various USB interface on the local data appliance for external storage. For this demonstration, I'll leave the default as network share. For the format type, the appliance allows for VHD, VHDX, VMDK, and VMDK link. For our use case, I'll select VHDX. VHD has a maximum volume size of 2 terabytes, so you're going to want to keep this in mind, while VHDX can support volume size of up to 65 terabytes. We'll leave the boot option as auto detect and click on export. The export option initiates and may take several minutes to complete. With the export option completed, we are presented with two options to access the VHDX file, Samba or NFS. We'll explore the Samba share with Windows File Explorer. This server has a single volume, the 90 gig allocated for the C drive. I'll copy the VHDX file to my Hyper-V data store. With the file copy, I'm now ready to create a virtual machine and associate the copy disk as the boot volume. From the Hyper-V manager, I'll select Action, New, Virtual Machine. Our goal for this wizard is to create a VM shell and associate the VHDX file we just copied over. I'll proceed to Next and give my VM a name. I'll call it Restore-RDS. Proceeding to Next, I'll change the generation of the virtual machine to Generation 2, and I'll update the memory to 4 gig. I'll use my default Hyper-V switch. For the virtual hard drive, I'll select to use existing virtual hard disk as the option and select the VHDX file we copied over earlier. I'll review the summary and complete the VM creation. To verify the VM integrity, I'll right click and connect to the VM and power it on. So there it is, no surprise, the VM powered on successfully. We'll now examine a second way of restoring from the local appliance of Hyper-V. In this approach, we'll utilize the Dado Utilities ISO to perform a BMR restore to an empty VM. Using this restore method have a couple of advantages. First, only used data is copied over to the VHD versus transferring the entire managed disk as we have done previously. Second, if we were performing an instant local virtualization on a Dado appliance, it provides a way to initialize the restore while mirroring changes as snapshots occurs on the running VM on the Dado appliance. Let's begin in the Hyper-V Manager by creating a new virtual machine. I'll begin by selecting Action, New, New Virtual Machine. I'll name the VM BMR Restore. I'll set it to Generation 2 and increase the memory to 4 gigs. For networking, I'll utilize my default Hyper-V switch. I'll leave the hard disk as a standard 127 gig and change the location. And for the install options, 
I'll boot the system from an installation media. This media will be the Dado BMR utilities downloaded from download.dado.com. I'll review the summary and click on finish. Before I start this VM, I want to disable secure boot and increase the CPU core to 4. I'll edit the VM settings and make those changes. From the Hyper-V manager, I'll connect to the VM and start it. With the data utility started, I'm presented with four options. The first option in the list is what we are interested in, but a quick one-liner on the others. The Cloud BMR used for data continuity for PC is where an MSP can perform a bare metal restore of a PC image backed up to the data cloud. The rapid rollback restore is an efficient way to roll back changes to a machine. It's very helpful where there might be a number of configurations or file system changes made to a system due to patches or application install. This feature will compare the state of the disk and that of the backup snapshots and only restore the files that are different. And lastly, Cirrus image is a way for MSP to build their own BDR appliance on certified Ubuntu hardware. All right, let's proceed on clicking on BMR. This next screen lists out all the data appliances exist on the client's local network that is on the same public IP address as the VM. I'll select the AMZ Cirrus appliance and log in. Once log in, I'll select the AMZ RDS server and proceed to next. There are many restore points for the server. Pay attention to the local verification column. You'll always want to pick a snapshot that is fully verified, showing a solid green. Fully verified snapshots are when check this returns no issues, VSS riders were healthy in QS in the system, and all volumes included as part of the backup set, as well as there is no evidence of ransomware on the file system. I'll proceed by picking a snapshot. The continuous merit checkbox allows for the utility to launch a listener that applied delta changes to the restore after the point in time snapshot was copied over. Leveraging the continue merit capability allows an MSP to minimize their maintenance window while failing back to production. For instance, I can start an instant local virtualization on a Cirrus appliance and leverage the continuous mirror feature with the rescue agent. As snapshots are taken with the rescue agent, the listener in the BMR transfers the delta changes of the running VM onto the data appliance and applies those changes to the VM on the production host. Failback becomes a simple step of stopping the mirroring process and powering on the VM as the systems are now in sync. I'll click on the next button to continue. The following screen analyzes the partition of the backup disk and make a recommendation for the utility to automatically create the partition tables. If you like to customize the layout, select manual partition. With this option, I can set the EFI and NTFS boot partition size, as well as select which VHD disk I would like to associate to a volume. For our example, I'll use automatic partition and proceed to next. I am presented with a summary of the disk layout. I'll proceed to clone the data by clicking on the clone data button. The model that prompts is requesting the disk to be format. I'll confirm this. The data utilities begin the process of formatting the disk, creating the file system partition, and begin transferring of the data. I'm operating on a gig network and have other workloads utilizing the bandwidth. Thus, the average copy speed I'm seeing is going to be around 60 to 65 megabytes per second. I'll pause the video to allow this process to complete. With the transfer finish, I'll select Finish and Reboot. This ejects the ISO. It takes a few minutes for the VM to start, but we can see the restore method was successful as well. A final item worth considering before we wrap up, Microsoft Hyper-V does provide tools to copy or migrate a virtual disk image from a fixed or tick provision to dynamic expanding. To perform this task, edit the VM setting and navigate to the VHD. 
Select the Edit button and proceed to Next. Choose to convert the disk and proceed to Next. In the Choose Disk Type option, select Dynamic Expanding. You'll be prompted to select a location to save the dynamic expanding disk. Once the conversion process is completed, proceed to edit the VM to use this new disk. All right, this wraps up our video on restoring to Microsoft Hyper-V. I hope you found this video informative. Thanks for watching.